Thank you and good morning. I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak at the conference. I spoke last year in the new technology and emerging business models segment. Um, but since then, uh, we're, we've stopped being a new technology and stopped being an emerging business model, apparently. Um, a couple of good items from last year, we, we published the world's best complete human genomes, having really solved the complete human genome sequencing problem. We published the world's first cancer genomes from a primary tumor instead of cell line. We shipped over 600 complete human genomes of over 40x coverage to our customers, signed contracts for another 2,000 more, including over 1,000 genomes that we're sequencing right now for the National Cancer Institute. So having been disqualified from the new technology and emerging business model category, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak in the cancer category. And fortunately, we've done some work in that area. I also have taken Randy Scott aside and we've had words about his assertion that sequencing will be free. <laughs> For all of my investors, I beg to differ. <clears throat> what I'd like to talk to you today about is how DNA sequencing is going to affect um, cancer prevention. And it's a combination of things really coming together now and over the next few years that I think are going to be dramatic in the world of cancer. And it's a number of insights that have just emerged in the last few years, some of them older than others. And then um, a, a number of new technologies and tools that are enabling, I think, a, a whole new method. So let me give you the, the basic components of this new method. The first is circulating tumor cells. And you heard Mara previously describe that. There are a variety of small, very vibrant companies with fabulous new technologies for extracting tumor cells from a regular blood draw. And, and typically, a, a mill of blood that has 10 of the ninth red blood cells, 10 of the six white blood cells, will have a handful of circulating tumor cells between one and 10. So, but just by going to your doctor and getting a normal blood draw, you get access to you know, a few ones, maybe as many as a few tens of tumor cells. This is a huge insight that uh, can drive the cancer industry. The second observation is the speed of cancer development. There is a, a widely held misconception that cancers grow really fast, as I think all of us probably have difficult personal stories of someone who's diagnosed with cancer and then very quickly succumbs to the disease. But in fact, cancer cells actually grow very slowly. And a recent publication that came out of Johns Hopkins in October uh, in Nature showed here that in a pancreatic cancer they studied, it was at least a decade from the initiating mutation uh, to the birth of the founder cell, and then another five years from the founder cell to the metastasized tumor. This is not quick. This is really, really slow. This gives us a wonderful opportunity to catch cancers before they grow and metastasize. And the third insight is around DNA sequencing. In conjunction with Genentech, we uh, sequenced and published the first lung cancer tumor from primary tissue last year. And what we found was shocking. Uh, first of all, the number of mutations in the tumor was much higher than anyone expected, about 50,000 mutations in a single lung cancer tumor. This equates to a, about um, one mutation for every three cigarettes this lung cancer patient smoked. Uh, cigarettes are wonderful carcinogens. Um, but we also found in this enormous structure of structural rearrangements, huge segments of the genome moved around. And the value of this is that whenever you move around a piece of the genome, you connect pieces of DNA in a novel way. All right? Take a piece of DNA out of one part of the genome and insert it in the other part of the genome. Where they connect, it's called the junction of the DNA, that sequence of DNA is unique to that cancer. Not unique to that person, unique to that cancer. It gives us a completely unique signature using the methods of DNA engineering for specifically identifying that cell. And finally, the price of DNA sequencing is coming down very rapidly. You saw some data earlier that shows us down to under $100,000. My company sells uh, the highest quality complete human genomes in the world for under $10,000. That includes all of the informatics work done as well. So this is not getting fast, uh, getting better at the speed of Moore's Law. This is getting better roughly at the speed of Moore's Law squared. The, the big boat anchor that we have now is the computing just isn't getting cheap fast enough. It's a very different world that we live in in the DNA sequencing world. In addition to the costs coming down radically from $20,000 to $50,000 a couple years ago, five to $10,000 this year, two or $3,000 in two or three years, and ultimately price of a blood test, a few hundred bucks to have your genome sequenced. Not zero, Randy, not a few hundred bucks. Um, this is in inevitable, inexorable, and, and we're, we're driving this to happen, and we're embracing this change and offering these kinds of prices to our customers. 
Also, the sequencing is uh, now for the first time being done from a handful of cells, not from 100 micrograms or even 100 nanograms, but from 100 picograms of DNA. And that's very important for circulating tumor cells. So a conclusion, if you put these pieces together, here's what's going to happen in 10 years when you go see your doc, and probably quite a bit sooner than that. You'll have a routine blood test. They'll screen it for circulating tumor cells. And you probably do this annually. If you did it every three years, that'd be OK, too. If they find circulating tumor cells, we sequence them. We look up the pathways that these cancers are using. And we simply select the drug off the shelf that address those pathways and give it to you before we can image the tumor. We have no idea where that cancer is growing. We just know that that cancer is shedding cells into your bloodstream. It's there, and we have a complete signature for them. What's that going to require in terms of technology development? Almost nothing. The technology to extract circulating tumor cells well, which we're within a year or two of, and the technology to sequence these at uh, the price of a blood test, which for many people were really already there. Single digit thousands of dollars will already do it. So the cancer research agenda this leads us to is for, you know, keep studying more cancer pathways. You know, the Vogelson team says 13. I think we'll probably find more. Um, develop more cancer therapeutics. There are over 800 cancer therapeutics right now in the pipeline, and we hope a lot of good drugs come out. And then continue down or maybe rejuvenate the old path, or one of the old paths of therapies, which essentially is gene therapy. Okay? Because for the first time, for a few hundred dollars, we're going to have a genetic marker, a genetic signature that is absolutely unique to a cancer cell. In fact, we're going to pick the genetic marker based on sequencing the cancer sequencing that person that the cancer came, came from and pick the genetic sequence that is most dissimilar from the person's normal genome and present in the cancer genome, and then just build targeted therapy, such as being able to insert a killer gene at that junction and only that junction and kill off the cancer cells. So this is, I think, a, a path that's going to be followed. I think it's within 10 years and hopefully within five, and it's the first I think general purpose cancer prevention methodology that will be available for a few hundred dollars to everyone in the world regardless of their cancer. And it's the, uh, the new tools of sequencing, of circulating tumor cells, and of uh, um, inserting killer genes into cells that will make all this happen. Stop. Thank you very much.